sliding out above any other mechanic in Trackmania has to be the worst. As a player, there's almost no feedback given to you about what's happening and, though it's not RNG, it's not much better. The Trackmania car is fully automatic, and on every other surface in the game, the car will gear up or down whenever it wants to, based on the engine's RPM. On ice though, the rules are different. The gear the car wants to go into is still based on its speed, that much hasn't changed. However, whether the car actually shifts or not is also decided by the angle that you're sliding at. In the past, Mika has talked about the 90 degree shield. And Mika is right, the 90 degree shield is real. But unfortunately, that's just the beginning of the real story of ice gearing. The core mechanic at play is a safe zone, where the car will only gear at certain angles. For the lower safe zone, this is mostly, but not completely, determined by the engine's RPM. When you're sliding at around 90 degrees or more, the engine is fully spinning out. But, as you drop from the slide, you can start to hear the engine try to catch the speed that we're really going. It is possible to slide out while gearing up here, but we found it to be less of a risk than the other danger zones. And unfortunately, this is where things just stop making sense. Just above 90 degrees, at about 92, we reach the first certified Nadeo physics moment, the danger wedge. Between 92 and 94 degrees, the car may gear up, and if it does, it's pretty likely to slide out entirely. The danger wedge isn't perfectly consistent. You won't always slide out. But if you start underneath it or extend a slide within it by brake tapping, beware. Dropping through this zone from above is safe, though. The danger wedge varies pretty significantly by speed. At its widest, it's around 3 degrees, and at its narrowest, just under 1. Past this wedge, we reach the upper safe zone. Between these two lines, your car will hold whatever gear it's in indefinitely, just like the lower safe zone. This line starts at 123 degrees, but it drops all the way down to around 106 depending on your speed. This gearing is an instant. Usually, it takes around a fifth of a second of driving in the danger zone at speed for the car to gear. The car seems to remember if it was close to gearing up recently, so re-entering a danger zone right after you left it seems to make gearing more likely. Going from high to low speed, the same logic applies for gearing down, though at least you don't have to worry about the danger wedge. The green line you've seen is the point of ideal acceleration. Aim for it, but never underslide. Just a few degrees makes a huge difference. This is the graph I made in my last video. Just look at how much the acceleration drops as I cut too far inside. So, practically speaking, what should you do? Whenever you're sliding near the threshold of a gear, try to keep the car inside of the lower safe zone. You can extend this to the ideal line to gain more speed, but know that you run the risk of hitting a gear and potentially sliding out. If you have to slide more than this, make sure to skip past the danger wedge into the overslide safe zone, and don't overdo it. If you push this too far, you will slide out. Honestly, this is going to be hard to see or feel without having this tool, especially when you can't even know if you're going fast enough to be in danger of gearing in the first place. If that's still not enough, and you need to go tighter but you're going too fast, try releasing steering just for a moment. It'll dramatically slow down your car, hopefully enough that you're under the gear threshold. That way, you can slide all the way without worrying about gearing up. Here's a clip Ruben got that shows off how far you can push this pretty well. First, we get into zeroth gear, and then we keep accelerating. By staying in the lower safe zone, Ruben was able to get all the way up to 290 speed while being in gear zero. They're able to manipulate the lower safe zone quite a bit to pick up speed from beyond it closer to the ideal angle, but eventually the gear does come. There's no danger wedge drawn in this clip, so you'll just have to imagine it being there. In the end, it's the lower limit that causes the gear anyway. Before I talk about methodology, let's talk about this plugin's release. Open Planet is going to be releasing a new learning mode, where you'll be able to use these types of plugins in a safe, local-only environment. You won't be able to join servers or upload records to leaderboards. More information about that, and everything else this tool can do, will be coming soon. 
This graph is the full story of the million-ish data points we've collected for this. This is in chronological order, with the right side of the graph being the moment the car changes gears, and everything before that being, well, before that. Let's zoom in on the region that we're really interested in, from around 80 degrees to about 150 degrees. You can see the effect of the upper safe zone. Inside of it, there's nothing, but everywhere else, gears galore. But just underneath that zone, we have what looks like the danger wedge. Look at all of these slide outs coming from both above and below. What's going on here? Let's just look at the exact points where the car changed gears and plot speed against the angle that the gear change happened. The danger wedge is fully apparent here. There's no getting around it. We can zoom in further to see the way this shifts over time with surprisingly smooth curves. This view is the core of what I pulled my values from. The lower slide limit is a little more nebulous. There's not a hard line like there is for the upper regions of the danger wedge and the over slide limit. A major point I'm glossing over here is what makes a good gear change good and what makes a bad gear change bad. Honestly, I don't really have a good answer yet of why some are better than others, but well, some are better than others. Sometimes the car shifts from first to fourth and is able to start accelerating again almost instantly within just a couple hundred milliseconds. But other times, this downslope and speed from the shift just keeps going and going and going and it's been two seconds, and this is a slide out. Special thanks to Unproven Ruben for all the collaboration and the discovery of this. What do you think? Did you know about these safe zones and the danger wedge before? Are there any questions you have that you wish I answered? I'll be releasing a follow-up video once learning mode is out going through the full potential of this plugin, so I'll be able to go through any questions you have then.